Good morning, Offenbach. Are you still awake? Are you still awake? Can you hear me? After such an entertaining talk or intro talk by Eckhard von Hirschhausen, it's very hard to continue, but he, he set the stage in the right way, I think. Besides the fact that we are in Offenbach and not in Frankfurt, which is a slight difference to the ones who are in this room and out of the region of Hesse. Before I start, I would like to know who is sitting here in front of me. So, who is part of the sustainability team? Please raise your hands. Okay. And who is in the tech space? Who has a technology background? I just heard the one here, the lady with, with purpose in IT, which I liked a lot. All right. Now, I would say Eckhart is clearly in the sustainability camp. Now, where are the enterprise, the companies, the small and medium-sized representative? There's one, just a few. And last but not least, where are the bankers? Oh, many of those. Great. So it's all great that we have you here on today's festival and yesterday as well. Although I have to say, I think we should probably work a little bit more on the techies. And why is that? Because I am convinced that only if experts from the technology side and IT and sustainability come together, we will actually achieve the green transformation. And I really like the contribution of the ladies on the left that actually said we need IT with purpose. That is exactly what I'm going to talk about now. If you think about, and you probably have seen the picture of the so-called famous climate stripes here on the back of me. This has been uh, developed and identified by Professor Ed, uh, Ed Hawkins from the University of Reading. And what the graph clearly shows is over two centuries, the development of our temperatures. And you can see the blue shades. That's where the temperature was below the average. And the more we come towards the modern times, you can see the red stripes. And that shows clearly the years that were hotter than average. And thinking about the hotter stripes here, we only have seven years left, ladies and gentlemen, to reach our goals of the Paris Climate Convention Agreement. In Germany, in our country, this means that our emissions have to fall by about 440 million tons by the year 2030, just as a hard data point. And that means about less than 40% of the emissions than last year. In order to achieve this target from now on, we have to basically reduce our uh, uh, um, emissions by 6% year over year. And another data point for you, from 20, 2010 onwards, we only achieved a reduction of about 2% year over year. That gives you a sign and a, and a kind um, information on where we stand right now with our speed. And speed is key. And it's not only about climate change. You've seen the pictures uh, of my predecessor here. And decarbonization. It is also about biodiversity, ladies and gentlemen. And what is that? Let me show you something. This is an aircraft. Thanks to our major hub, our major airport here in Frankfurt, we have many of those around us. I want to talk about the so-called rivet popper hypothesis invented by a very famous economist, Paul Ehrlich. And what is this all about? Imagine you are sitting on an aircraft, and you're flying around. During the flight, you observe that one of the ribbits here begins to lose. It flies away, and you're sitting in that aircraft as a passenger. Say, oh, great, that's funny. Let's take a picture with your smartphone. 
and post it immediately on your Instagram account. And the second one loses. And when the second one loses, the fear kicks in. And you start thinking, oh my God, will the, bli the plane still fly? Am I going to land safely? And the more and more rivets are lost. At some point, bigger parts of the airplane become loose and the plane no longer flies. And now, here comes the analogy. Now imagine the plane is our ecosystem. Each species on our planet is a rivet. And all rivets together hold the ecosystem of our plane or our planet together. And our ecosystem can only continue to be stable if we only lose a few species. And since we all usually do not live close to nature, it might not be a big problem if there are fewer birds or fewer frogs around us. But as more and more species are lost on this earth, their individual contributions to the ecosystem are missing. They are lost. And as a consequence, the ecosystem fails and is lost as well. It falls apart. Every day, we are losing 150 species on Earth, and they are lost forever. And we don't know yet which rivet, which species will reflect and be the tipping point, or if I may call it the last rivet before we start falling apart. Therefore, it is important that we start transforming our economy and society into a new, let's call it sustainable and social level. And the, the green transformation we are all in requires all kinds of companies and industries, the smaller ones, the mid-sized, as well as the big ones. And I'm in total agreement with Eckhart von Hirschhausen, the allocation of money and funds to sustainable business mo models is really key to success. It is crucial going forward. This is probably the most ambitious project in mankind. The financial sector, to me, has a crucial role to play in this game. It acts more to say as a, as a lever, as a facilitator. And the finance sector should do the best it can, allocating capital where it is most needed. That is clearly the mandate and the mission. In 2021, not so long, so long ago, Commerzbank, as one of the first banks in the world, we committed ourselves to become a net zero bank. Now we want to achieve this and we committed to it, to be net zero and to adhere to that standard by the year 2040. And with regards to our client loan portfolio, in terms of investment and, and, and financings, by the year 2050 at the latest. Now, many of you might think, oh God, 2040, 2050, that's far too late. And I agree, of course, it takes a long time and I wish we could do it much faster. But changing an economy is not like pressing, let's call it the green button, and we turn the entire economy, society, the businesses, the companies upside down into green. It's much more difficult than that. The path of transformation, ladies and gentlemen, is not a quick sprint, it's a marathon, it's a long-term process. And we as Commerzbank, we are investing and continuing to expand our investments in ecological companies and also in climate-friendly innovations, because that is key to success. But let me say something as well. If we only finance what is already green, we will not be able to make the change. Why is that? Think about the loan book. A bank like ours, we have a huge loan book. And our loan book reflects 
the corporate uh, and economic structure of our country, of the German economy. And our customer portfolio naturally also includes many industrial companies and so-called CO2 intensive ones as well, sectors as well. It is our task as a bank, as a major player in this economy and society to support all clients that are willing to embark on this green transformation. Otherwise, it will never work. However, there are companies and commitments out there that we are no longer supporting. Oh, that's the warning day. So I just keep going. Sorry for that. But I can't call Berlin. They would not switch it off. So we are no longer supporting clients that generate more than 20% of their sales or power generating investments based on coal. Right, I'm very sorry. Shall I wait or shall I continue? I keep going. Are you okay with that? All right, I keep going. Good. We are using in our bank the so-called science-based target approach. What is that? So we reduce on a science-based approach transactions, the so-called brown transactions, like coal and others, and we manage that, those in our loan portfolio. That is actually officially um, measured and verified by government authorities as well. And there's a high number of laws and regulations around which politicians, not only in Germany, across Europe, actually bring forward the so-called ESG regulations and laws. From 2024 onwards, as one example, there will be a key performance indicator called the green asset ratio. So what is that? That is a new ratio that actually takes into consideration sustainable finance, financings in a bank over the, 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 the entire loan book. And they try to, uh, to, to measure the sustainability structure of a bank based on one number, the green asset ratio. It's not far away, comes next year. However, a recent study of the German Banking Association has shown that such a ratio, such a pure number, not adequately reflects the way the German economy works and the profiles of the banks are wrongly represented based on that. And why is this? Because that green ratio and the underlying taxonomy that pays into such a ratio basically reflects only 30% of the economic structure of this country. And the balance sheet of a bank like Commerzbank and other big players in Germany and Europe actually reflect the economic breakdown as a whole. We also have other sectors. So as the, in the end of that, what does it mean? The green asset ratio per se as a KPI is not the right indicator to, memorize, to measure all that. That shows you that we are only at the beginning on our path towards transformation. The direction is obvious. The path is clear but we're at the beginning and we, we embark on. In the future, only companies with a green mission that is clear will receive money. This means the pressure on companies, small, medium, bigger ones, to embark on that transformation is increasing steadily over time. And by the way, our clients really expect from us to position ourselves also sustainably. That is clear. And as I just said, the economic transformation and the sustainable economic system is a long-term process. And that's why we must make sure that we as companies and banks, as well as our clients, actually embark on that path and on the right one. That's why we need, and I'm clearly convinced with that, we need to measure our progress going forward. You've seen the time span that is still available. It's not a lot. 
And ESG data is becoming, in my view, equally important in the future as financial figures like P&Ls, balance sheet, financial statements as such. And most companies, ladies and gentlemen, find that measuring and collecting ESG data is very difficult and time consuming. ESG, ESG standards are currently evolving. They are introduced. They are not stable yet. Out there on the, on the floor, you see some, some stands where ESG data and data management is shown and where we are right now, but it's evolving. It's unclear which data has to be collected and how ESG scores are correctly calculated. The taxonomies and the ESG factors, the underlying factors, are constantly changing. They are not yet there. And this complicates, obviously, for the various sectors we are all in, where we stand, and what is needed for a consistent measurement and analysis. And there is another factor important. There is not enough internal and external data av av available right now as open sources to calculate those ESG scores, especially for medium-sized companies and the smaller ones. If I talk about uh, our client base and we, we have lots of, of, of companies here on, the, on this, in this festival, and you talk, you get the answer, how do you collect your ESG data? And many of them are not ready with their digitalized infrastructure yet in the companies. And they basically use spreadsheets. They do Excel sheets in order to calculate their data. Those are not robust, infrastructurally uh, sound processes going forward. Therefore, ESG reporting and the way it looks like is a key success factor for the companies in this economy, in this country, and across Europe. So how can a solution look like that's the key question. Even though that the standards are yet not completely defined, they are evolving, as I mentioned, companies should closely follow developments and understand the status quo with, it, with regards to ESG regulation and the measurements. Otherwise, they will be in a competitive disadvantage towards their other players in the market. Thereby, it's important to focus not only on climate change and decarbonization, but also on biodiversity. That topic needs to follow as well. Companies should seek professional support, in my view. For example, we offer here, and you've seen the stand, our impact solution platform. That impact solution platform offers sustainable solutions through 80 providers on the platform. The ideas are out there, software is developed, and that needs to be knitted together. And the platform is a valuable source to actually do that. But companies should do more. They should also invest in their digital infrastructure, as well as in data collection and management systems, and should centralize their data in cloud-based storages and other tools. The entire infrastructure has to be beefed up, in my view. And this gives, gives companies a real-time overview and a better understanding of their individual ESG performance going forward, such as the energy demand, um, CO2 emissions, or water or material consumptions, depending on the sector the company operates in. On top of that, new technologies such as AI, machine learning, um, could help and organize that unstructured amount of data I was talking about previously in order to actually structure this and get a better baseline for the ESG reporting. But ladies and gentlemen, it's not only about data management we're talking here. The innovative technologies have the potential to mitigate on those climate change uh, risks I talked to previously. And let me say something, after all, as COO, Chief Operating Officer of Commerce Bank, I can say the digitalization in this country is definitely progressing. We are not that bad. We have started, we have embarked on the route. But it makes it even more important 
And I liked, I really liked the comment made by the lady in, in, in uh, Hirschhausen's uh, uh, talk that digitization and sustainability have to work hand in hand. They have to be considered in tandem. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Otherwise, the CO2 footprint that digitalization will bring with it will increase lots of compute power, the cloud, data centers, and what have you. And if that doesn't go hand in hand with our sustainability efforts, then we don't have a positive sustainability effect. That's why I am convinced that the combination of technology, IT, and sustainability, which I call the twin transition, is key to success going forward. And those levers are key for the transition to transformation. And I think we can really add real value if we use that in the right way. And let me give you an example what a company, a client of us, is currently doing. You probably all know what this looks like. This is a waste container. And we are working currently with Reynos Data Management on a waste management, intelligent waste management solution that saves time and resources and lowers CO2 emissions. Now, what are, you, are we doing with this to be more concrete? Those containers are equipped with intelligent sensors, IoT sensors. That's why the Internet of Things. They communicate via a blockchain, a distributed a uh, ledger technology, they send impulses, so-called triggers, events, when they're full. Then the car comes or the lorry comes and picks it up and the disposal event is then managed, it's emptied and a payment via an API which is linked to that blockchain is then triggered and the payment functions. That complete ecosystem or platform system is up and running that gives you a kind of a, 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 a sensitivity what it means combining sensor technology distributed ledger blockchain technology and sustainable sustainability in the life cycle of waste management and disposals that's the way it should work that's the future and companies should pursue the digital and that um, sustainable transformation as in the kind of Reynos together. The twin uh, transition, as I mentioned, basically help, could help us, and that's according to government authorities here in, in, in Germany, that could help us reduce the emissions by up to 20%, which is a huge chunk on our way to the Paris, Paris climate uh, commitments we are all in. So in essence, what is my conclusion? My conclusion is, first of all, that data and data analysis will be the backbone of the green and digital transformation. Second, digitization is the lever for achieving our sustainability goals. Third, the sustainable transformation can serve as a meaningful purpose, as a source for our meaning going forward and the purpose for our digital transformation. Only the combination of the digitalization process we're currently on and sustainability can offer that incredible potential for a green and digital innovation we as an economy and a society really need. Or you can put it in other words, we have to break new ground. Or as we say within Commerce Bank, there is no time to hesitate, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's time for action. Thank you so much and have a great festival.